In this video, we'll just have a quick look at these portable SSDs from SanDisk. These are the cheapest uh, name brand SSDs I could find uh, on sale right now on Amazon, 44% off. I plan to use these with my console, so one for my PS5 and one for my Xbox Series X, just to run last gen games off of these storages here. And this is a much cheaper way to do so compared to installing like a more official way on the PlayStation 5. Of course, you need a NVMe PCI Express Gen 4 NVMe SSD. And on the Xbox, you need that proprietary little SSD you plug in to the backside, which costs quite a lot of money. For the same price as one terabyte NVMe SSD, PCI Express Gen 4, I could get two of these drives, so I can kind of get double the storage, just run external, and this is fine for just running the last gen games. Of course, I cannot run current gen games directly off of external storage. Adding a lot of my last gen games to external storage, I will also free up a lot of space on the internal storage of my de devices, so actually should be fine enough for the foreseeable future for me at least. And these are the lowest end models that Sandisk is currently selling. And these are the new model. You can kind of see the new design there with a the little loop on the outside of the case instead of having a hole inside of the of the case. So that's one telltale that this is the new model. And like I said, this is the lower, lowest end model. They also have an Extreme and an Extreme Pro models, which is of course tiers up from this one here, but this is just the cheapest one and it runs at SATA speed. So probably just have a M.2 SATA drive in here. And in terms of terabyte per dollar, this is definitely the best I can get from a the name brand that I have pretty high confidence in. SanDisk offer three years of warranty and you see up to 512 megabytes per second read speed. This is of course only read speed. Write speed is probably a little bit slower than that. But actually if you go into their website, they're not really that transparent with the specification of this drive here. So they have a little bit of information here telling it's it runs up to 512 megabytes per second. You can drop it from uh, two meters of height, so this does, doesn't have any weather sealing like the more high-end models have, and they don't really specify how many terabyte writes this can handle. Only really specify that it has USB Type-C plug and that it uses USB 3.2 Gen 2. So it is a 10 gigabit per second USB controller on here, but it just runs at SATA speed anyway, so you won't really get faster transfer speed. So I'm kind of curious to test these ones out. And let's just have a look around the box. Of course, we don't really need to take a look at both of them. But just like, let's have a look at one of them here. Portable SSD, so very slim, very uh, lightweight as well, made entirely by plastic. And here you can see that three year of warranty, up to two meters of drop protection. And you can have it in your shirt pocket. And of course it works on both uh, PC and Mac. And you can save some time with an SSD because of course you can have faster transfer speed to this device here. And we'll also do a speed test a little bit later in this video here. First, let's just have a look at the device itself. So it does come with a USB-C to USB Type-A cable. So you don't get a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable, which is a little unfortunate. But for my instance here, running it on my Xbox and on my PlayStation 5, they both have USB Type-A, so it's not an issue for me. But of course, if you have a newer MacBook and other devices that only have USB Type-C, you need to account for supplying your own cable as well if you want to use USB Type-C to USB Type-C connection. But let's just get into this box here, cut through the seal here in the top, and see what we actually get in the box. And that's all we have inside here. So very small drive actually, actually quite a bit smaller than I anticipated. Also very lightweight. Let's just put this to the side for now. So we get a little SanDisk SSD safety and warranty guide. So of course you can read this if you want to. I think it's just mandatory that you have to include something like this. And below that we find that USB type A to USB type C plug. And let's just have a look at that first. It's not really the longest cable either. And like I said, you only get this type A cable, no adapters or anything like that in the box. So the cable is just around 30 centimeters which is equivalent around the 12 inch mark. So not the longest cable, but that's fine enough if you just want to connect it to your computer or laptop or yeah, your gaming console. And of course we have USB type C here in one end and like I said, USB type A here in the other end. So this is supposed to be a 10 gigabit per second cable, I believe, but I could be wrong. Then of course we have the SSD. It actually is a little bluish to its color looked a little grayish on the photo on the website, but it definitely is a little bit blue. For some reason, there is a piece of plastic wrapped around it. I'm not really sure what this is good for, other than 
for damaging the environment. But anyways, we have that sand disk here, the logo right in the middle, and these holes there doesn't go all the way through, so it's just kind of a design element. Of course, all plastic. On the right side here, we do have that USB Type-C plug down in the bottom there. Not really sure if this is the best location, really, but yeah, it's fine enough. And you have that little loop there, so you can kind of hook it up to something. But of course, you have to supply your hook yourself. Other than that, we just have plastic all the way around here. Actually, in my opinion, looks pretty decent. Feels kind of well built as well. And on the back side, we just have that one terabyte branded there. Also have a little bit of Sam SanDisk branding on there. And it just explained the model number here and all of those different markings as well. Overall, not bad at all. Actually, a little bit heavier than I would have anticipated. I've seen some people complaining about the low build quality. But I don't think you should expect really that much from a low-end device like this. Let's just throw it on the scale here and see what kind of weight we actually get. So 44 grams for the device itself or the SSD drive itself there and including the cable. We're looking at 56 grams, so still lightweight and in my opinion feels sturdy enough in hand. So let's just plug it into my PC and see how it is recognized, is it just recognized as a USB mass storage or if it actually recognizes that this is an SSD and see how much available storage we have and of course run a crystal disk mark speed test. And as you can see here, it is recognized right away. It is pre-formatted as XFAT. You have 931 gigabyte of available storage, which is pretty common for a one terabyte device or one terabyte drive. And you can see here it's also recognized as a SCSI device, a USB SCSI device, which is very good. So it's running on the faster USB protocol, not just USB mass storage, but a proper SCSI disk device. So definitely thumbs up there. I wasn't really sure about this one because didn't really advertise it or anywhere on the website. Could you find any information what kind of USB protocol that's actually using? And you can also see here, if you go into device management, it is recognized as a UAS storage unit and USB attached SCSI device. So that is very nice. So it's running at its full bandwidth on modern hardware. And on the drive itself, we do have some software you can use. So install SanDisk software. Let's just try and click on it and see what it actually does. I'm not going to install it, but I'm just curious to see what it wants to install because it doesn't really specify anything really here. And it wants to install SanDisk security. With SanDisk security, you can add password protection and encryption for the file system on your Western digital drive. So of course, if you have some sensitive information on there, you could always encrypt it and the software is already on the drive itself, ready to install. And you have some instructions here for secure access and for both Mac and also for Windows. I'm right now connected to a 5 gigabit per second USB port on my computer. Should be plenty fast. For this drive, let's just see if we can actually max out that read speed and what kind of write speed we actually get with this drive here. For some reason, Crystal Disk Mark just won't run. So let's try this cable here instead. This is a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable I've lying around. This is also capable of 10 gigabit per second. Sometimes I can have issues with the front I.O. on my case for some reason with some SSDs. Let's just try this USB Type-C cable instead and see if you can actually get it to run. And we have selected the right drive here. So J, five passes, one gigabit per files. And you can see here, it is actually making the test file there on the SSD. So let's see if it will run the test this time. For some reason, I cannot get Crystal Disk Mark to work on this computer. So let's just try and actually just transfer some big files to the SSD and see what kind of transfer speed we can get. I'll try to reboot my computer and then try Crystal Disk Mark again. Sometimes it can be a little iffy if I have not really shut down my computer in a long time. But anyways, let's just transfer this Windows 11 disk image to the SSD and see what kind of transfer speed we get. So we get a little warning there that we are copying it to an external SSD. And yes, yeah, seems to be just something wrong. I'm not sure if it's just my computer. See, I'm getting some kind of error there. Sometimes the front I.O. just doesn't work with SSD. It's so annoying. So now I have mounted the SSD on the USB port directly on the backside of my computer. For some reason, some SSDs just doesn't work with the front I.O. of my case. I have a Fantex P600S, I believe. I'm not really sure what the problem is, but just some SSDs have a hard time actually connecting to that. Those uh, front I.O. USB plugs that is connected, of course, to the header on the motherboard. So now I'm connected directly backside of my computer and I've connected to the 10 gigabit per second USB port. So let's try and transfer this 5.3 gigabyte file here 
Windows 11 to the SSD and see what kind of transfer speed that you can see we actually get pretty fast transfer speed there up into the 590 megabytes per second and this is read or excuse me this is write speed so actually faster than I would anticipate it I thought we would see more close to like maybe 300 or something like that so let's try and run crystal disk mark again and let's see what kind of speed we can actually get with this so same setup here five passes one gigabyte files and let's just hit start and right away it starts up so definitely not really working with the front io of my computer unfortunately i'm not really sure if this still is an issue with amd i'm running the x570 chipset and a ryzen 9 5900x i'm not really sure if there's still some issues with usb peripherals on the ryzen platform sometimes most stuff stuff work but like i said other usb devices for instance my other Western Digital here, I cannot really run that off USB Type-C. I have to run that off USB Type-A if I want it to work on the front I.O. And at the same time, with another USB that I have here, my own Mate or Rico USB device with an NVMe SSD inside, I can only run off USB Type-A, so only 5 gigabits per second on the front I.O. for some reason. If I connect this with 10 gigabit per second USB Type-C, then it will also act up kind of in the same way that the SanDisk is doing there, where it won't really read or write to the drive very, very slow. But you see here, write speed. Man, this is much faster than I would have anticipated from a drive like this. I would have, like I said, maybe see like a 300 megabytes, 320 megabytes per second write speed. So very happy to see that actually. This is of course useful when I'm transferring files to the drive and I'm going to transfer a lot of games. So five, 600 gigabyte worth of games I'm going to transfer to this drive so it won't really take that long considering this is almost 800 megabytes per second but this is also only one gigabit file size or one gigabyte file sizes so of course if you transfer a lot of files you will probably hit a bottleneck at some point so you will write in native speed I believe this is probably writing to the cache on the drive itself that will run out of course eventually and you will see this the true write speed but anyways we are almost getting into the read test and let's just try it hopefully for the last time i set it to only test the write speed so <laughs> kind of annoying so this will also, of course also test the read speed which is also a very interesting thing to look at read speed what 900 megabytes per second what is wrong with this drive so supposed to be up to 512 megabytes per second i think this is just some burst a read from the drive maybe it's like i said this does have some kind of cache but damn that's pretty fast 900 megabytes per second this is of course also over 10 gigabit per second usb i'm still using the included cable that came in the box supposedly or oh, it seems to be able to handle 10 gigabit per second as well which is kind of nice so if you have a 10 gigabit per second Definitely plug this one into that port. You can have a little bit faster transfer speed, but of course it may vary because you can also get this in 512 and a two terabyte version. The, the larger the storage, usually also the faster the transfer speed. But man, very impressed by this. Kind of make me want to try bigger files. So let's just do that afterwards and see how well, well it will actually handle that. Because this is only a one gig file and we'll only read five times. So the result here looks quite good actually. Almost makes me wonder if they actually thrown a lower end NVMe SSD in here because it does definitely exceed the speed of the SATA protocol. I'm leaning more towards like a lower end NVMe SSD and I think these devices, the cheap devices here from SanDisk, you never really know what you're going to get. Maybe you get an uh, SATA SSD, maybe you get an NVMe SSD. They will kind of just throw the lower end devices in the, the cheaper portable SSDs here in my, at least what I think so. Kind of makes me want to try the 60 gigabit gigabyte file and just run it one pass and see if it actually will drop in speed if you're trying to read 64 gigabyte of files let's just try that and let's just of course jump straight to the result this will take quite some time to run and reading and writing 64 gigabyte of file to this drive actually looks pretty similar to just run writing or reading a one gigabit file i mean one gigabyte file excuse me 64 gigabyte Definitely doesn't really slow this drive down. Maybe if I run more passes, but yeah, those will just take quite a bit longer. I think actually we have like an NVMe SSD in here. Kind of make me curious to try and take it, uh, take it apart and see what kind of drive we actually have inside. I'm not going to do that because I won't really risk damaging this device because I kind of need and want to use it. But definitely makes this maybe a little bit better value in terms of actually speed you can get with this drive. So maybe that's the reason why Sandis doesn't really 
specify anything about this drive either, other than you can expect up to 512 megabytes per second read, because maybe the lower end devices will just kind of throw whatever they have in stock inside of a device like this. So I might suspect you could get a SATA SSD, you can probably get an NVMe SSD. And since it's running a USB 10 gigabit per second protocol, you should get up to, as you can see here, 900 megabytes per second. Uh, you can get around a thousand megabytes ish per second running at 10 gigabits per second USB in my experience. So this is kind of in the border of saturating the USB plug. So maybe the drive itself would run actually faster if it's not really bottlenecked by the USB protocol. Nobody really knows because I don't want to take it apart like said, but definitely very happy with this one. Of course, if you're interested in this drive, I can share some affiliate link down in the description below. I got it off Amazon and like I said, it was 44% off and you can maximum buy two of these at the same time, which is what I did like I said for my PS5 and Xbox Series X. But that's pretty much all I have for this video. I hope to see you again in a future one. Until then, take care.